All right, guys, it's day two of SEMA 2022. I'm going to spend, I think, most of the day here in West Hall. This is where all the Jeeps and off-road uh, uh, vendors are. So we're going to uh, see how many miles I walk. Uh, yesterday was a fantastic day. Got to see all the outside stuff. Got my press pass. And uh, busy night uh, editing some videos. The Tesla loop was really cool. If, if you just come to Vegas for whatever vacation or whatnot, swing in. It's free to, to do the Tesla loop. It's a really, really cool experience. So let's go into the West Hall and see what they have to offer. All right, so here we are, Overland Experience. Let's go see all the Overlanders. Hey guys, Brett Mantle here with the American Adventure Lab. We're at the 2022 SEMA show. Right now we're in the Overland Experience and we're here with both our JL392 and our Gladiator showing off a bunch of new products. So in the back here we have our mass cargo system. Up top we have our mass cargo shelf, all adjustable in height. Down below we have mass drawers. This one has a four inch on top and then two six inch drawers. We have a new mass platform that we're calling Mass Plus. And so this is sort of the evolution of what we've had in the past. Uh, it has a door with access to the cubby hole. It doesn't use connectors. All the inserts are already threaded. So it makes pulling your components in and out super easy. And on the left we have our flipping slide. So it's a two stage slide, gives you a lot of table space with not very much height penalty. And uh, that's been great for us. So what you're looking at here is a newer version of our Versa table. So over here on this panel, we've added what we're calling entertainment controls. So this is your on-off switch for the rear amplifier. This is your Bluetooth control for the amp. It's your skip forward and skip back in volume. Uh, and down here we do a phone charger. And so the idea is that uh, you would set up, you know, to camp or tailgate or whatever your event is, and you have all of your controls in the rear. And then all of this audio is rear only. It doesn't tie into any of the OEM speakers, which means you can charge this from solar into our rear auxiliary battery system, and it keeps it all separate. So you're not worried about draining your battery, not being able to crank when you're ready to go home. So up top, we have our spare tire platform, which we've had this out for about a year now. Uh, it sold really well. We've added accessory brackets on the side. Stepping around the front, you can see the Max Tracks mounts. This is a fairly new product for us that we're calling the Track Strap. So this Molly panel is actually strapped onto the Max Tracks directly. So when you take the tracks off, the Molly panel comes with you. So that way you have everything you need for recovery or situations that may come up on the trail. So this is another new product for us that we just released. And we're calling this our Low Pro Rear Seat Delete. So the thought was you would get all of your cargo down as low as possible and generally we put our heavy things in there like our big toolboxes, water containers and stuff like that. That extra little height makes a huge difference when you're trying to pack a bunch of stuff in. So we will have a standard height rear seat delete as well uh, shortly, shortly after SEMA on that one. So. And then we have on the side, which may be kind of hard to see, we have side molly panels now. So we're mounting our Red Arc Manager 30 on that side, and on this side we have the Red Arc Inverter. And the seat back molly panels. Yep, yep. So we got seat back molly panels. We got door molly panels. Uh, we have our overhead molly shelf in this one as well. So we try to just make sure that we don't waste any space in the vehicle and that you have the ability to mount things that you need to wherever you want to mount them. Do you still so. able to take the freedom panels off? Absolutely, with? yeah. So they're off on that one up there. Okay. And it has the same same shelf on it. So. All right, so what we're going to talk about next is our under seat mount for the compressor, the ARB dual compressor. So what we did here that's unique is, is this bracket is set up to mount on the driver or passenger side. So here, what we call a connection kit, we have a driver version of that and a passenger version. So on the product page when you order, you just select which side you want and we give you the appropriate bracket. And if at any point you decide to move that, you can just purchase just that bracket and nothing else changes on the mount. And uh, yeah, pretty flexible system and we tried to make it so that you, have, you can move whenever you wanted to. Do you have to remove the whole seat to get to it? or Absolutely not. So that was the other cool thing that, that we really tried to do. Most of the other mounts in the market go under the seat bolts. Uh, I didn't really like that. I didn't like changing the seat angle from factory and stuff like that. So all of this bracket mounts on top of the seat. So you do pull out the two rear seat bolts. We replace those with longer ones and we give you a spacer pack that goes between so you can really crank down on those bolts. But yeah, like the install process, not counting the wiring, it's probably about five minutes with that thing under the seat. And uh, it's been great so far. 
All right, now we're gonna take a look at our Gladiator. So the important thing to note about this is last Monday, all the stuff you see in this bed didn't exist even in CAD. So we've had a lot of these ideas that we've been working through and we've had some earlier versions of our bed system, our bed rail system, but all of this is sort of a really impromptu uh, pressure session to get ready for SEMA. But what we've got is a, a very unique system that goes into the bed that what it does is it establishes all of the holes. So you can think of it like a lattice work. So you assemble this basically bracket structure, lay it in the bed, and that tells you where all your holes are to drill for the mounting pattern. So you drill those holes and down below, we have 3 16 nut plates. So there's about three mounts per plate and it's all in 3 16 steel. So once you go through the bed into those plates, you sandwich the bottom of the bed between the two. And so that gives you a really strong sort of load dispersed mounting point. These beds are aluminum, uh, they're pretty thin, so they're not terribly strong at one particular mounting point. But once you spread that across, you know, eight to 12 inches, that makes a big difference. So everything that you see here is mounted with those plates underneath. Very structural, very strong, doesn't add a lot of weight. And most importantly, when you take all this stuff out, you're not left with a mounting structure inside the bed. So that gives you a clear space to do whatever you need to. Uh, it also means that you can install like like this fridge slider will install in about, I don't know, three or four minutes because you're not getting underneath the whole bolts or nuts or anything like that. Everything installs from the top. So this is a 48, 48 inch long slide here. We have our uh, telescoping table set up that we're working on here. Uh, we do a Milwaukee pack out mount. This guy will pivot over if you want to do just cooking surface or whatever. Over on the right, we have 48 inch long, six inch tall drawers, and then another slider on top. Uh, and above that, we have what we're calling your bed rail attachment system. So the unique part about this that we did the pattern work on, so I'm pretty excited about it, we don't go inside the bed rails. So these, these brackets here that you see mount directly through holes down into the sides of the bed, and they attach to a bracket that we have underneath. So the same as we do in the bottom of the bed, on the bed rails, we also sandwich that bed rail in between. We make a really strong mount, which is kind of hard to tell how strong it is here, but there are literally only two bolts holding this in, but it's attached to this bracket system underneath that again, distributes the load across a wide area. So the whole purpose of this build and this product line is to get a ton of strength without adding a lot of weight. So we don't add a lot of thick material like a bunch of manufacturers do. And we make sure everything is designed very structurally, but designed with purpose. And, and that's what we have with both our base system and our bed rail attachment system. So we'll be adding a lot more products to this, these base components in the next few months. So make sure you follow along and check that out. All right, the gazelle tent. Ah, yeah. For all of us who have the gazelle tents. Yeah, so, so I, I literally have emotional feelings for these bigger, quick setup tents. Um, I'm not a huge ground tent, I'm not a huge uh, rooftop tent fan because you can't leave them at camp and they really change the attitude of the vehicle out on the trail. But the tents, for all of their strong points, are impossible to pack anywhere. They're just entirely too big. They don't even fit inside the Wrangler anywhere. So what we've done, we built what we're probably gonna end up calling like a, some type of tent cradle or tent tender. I don't know, we've got a thread on the Instagram about what to call this thing, so. Um, but yeah, super lightweight, it bolts in really simply. Uh, and then you just run the strap through the inside of the, the cradle there, so. A uh, really simple product, but solved a big need for us, keeping that thing nice and secure without sliding around. It's been good so far. All right, where do we find all your stuff? So you can check us out on Instagram at American Adventure Lab, Facebook, YouTube, at the same thing, and our website, AmericanAdventureLab.com. All right, thanks a lot. Yep, thank you. I am Matthew with Best Top. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, walkthrough of some of the Best Top product that we have that's new for Jeep and for Bronco. Um, we actually have an old here, a 1966 Ford Bronco, obviously not anything new, uh, but we wanted to kind of highlight where Best Tops come from, some of our heritage over the years. And uh, so this 1966 Bronco has an old Best Top Super Top Classic on it. Um, and then we of course have the new Bronco, which has a very loud 80s theme, kind of retro. 
Um, but the, the Bronco, one of the unique things about the Bronco when it comes to soft tops or tops in general is it has, on the four doors, it has two removable panels over the front seat and the second seat. And so we have a Sunrider for hardtop, which you may be familiar with that we've had with the Jeep for a long time that you can install over the Freedom panels and open and close from a seated position. We have that for the Bronco as well, but because the four-door Bronco has two sets of removable panels, um, this top can open and close um, and still retain the hardtop. So you have a hardtop here, but a soft top that opens over both rows. That's pretty cool. So that's new. Um, we also have uh, our actually fender flares on both this two door and the four door. These fender flares are new from Best Top. Um, you know, injected molded plastic that you know they just uh, easy to put on. Would have the 3M a double it, you know a double stick adhesive with the pins that use the factory lines, but it gives a kind of a, a nice aggressive look. Um, gives you a little extra tire coverage. And, uh, and this is our Trek Top. The Trek Top is one of our first products that we launched for the new body style Bronco. Um, it has that, that slanted back rear window that was made popular by our Trek Top for the Wrangler back when it came out a lot, quite back during the JK era. Um, this is our premium 12 material. Premium 12 is going to have a limited lifetime warranty. Really fade resistant, stain resistant, um, 40 millimeter thick windows that are tinted, very high quality, um, and it has a, a Sunrider feature that opens up and folds open. And then you can take the windows out and you just use it as essentially a bikini. So, um, this is actually something new that we have as well. This, this top deck here, um, we have a, a new line of tops from uh, Best Top that are Jeep licensed accessory tops, so they're, they come with the Jeep brand on the back of the uh, back of the top deck. Um, this is our newest top for the JL Wrangler. Um, it's our kind of standard super top. Uh, when the JL Wrangler came out, we, we launched it with our Cadillac Ultra Tops. Um, this is kind of more of your, your entry level top for the JL. Um, it's similar to our standard Trek top where it has a Sunrider feature that opens up just over the front seat, has removable windows. Um, one of the nice things about the Super Top and our standard Trek Top is even though it's not fully convertible like our Ultra Tops or our Glide on the JK, it uh, allows you to open and close just from a seated position. So you, don't have to, you don't have to stop and pull over and open it up. You can be at a stoplight, hit the latches, open it. Really. Oh, so the whole top doesn't drop? Not this time. Okay. Yeah, our, our standard Super Top, this is, that's as far as it opens, but you can still take the, the windows, windows out. out. So it kind of can be kind of a bikini that way yeah. as well. Um, some of the other products, uh, if you want to go back and look through some of the ones, um, they're really, really loud in that four-door Bronco, but we have uh, some of our sister companies in here. These are PRPC covers. Um, it's also got some toughy security products like the center console lock box. Um, it's got a lock box on the tailgate that I can show you. Um, but the PRPC covers are awesome because they are a seat cover but they're so fitted and tight that they look like a replacement seat. Yeah, I thought they were replacement yeah, seat or, covers. Or, uh, they almost look like, like like a cat skin where you have to take a lot of times, you know, you take the the uh, the actual seat apart and then put the new seat on. Yeah. Um, but uh, these are just a, a slip-on cover, so but they still have a nice tight look. Um, that's that toughy tailgate lock box. With the mole panels on the back? Yeah. Cool. Um, all of these Jeeps and Broncos here in our booth, the, the two Broncos and this and this JL have uh, Illumines bumpers. Um, Illumines has been big in the overlanding space with like the Sprinter vans and things like that. Um, and they obviously make aluminum products. Um, and the bumpers on this Jeep and those two new Broncos are aluminum, uh, made by Illumines. Really lightweight, sturdy, not going to corrode. Um, and then uh, this is actually an odd thing for SEMA. Normally we're launching new products for late model vehicles, um, but we actually have a new product for the 2004 to 2006 LJ. Um, so the LJ is the long wheelbase Wrangler of the essentially of the, of the TJ area. They're very collectible. Um, people want to you know keep them nice and and uh, and so 
because of the lower car count, Best Top never did come out with a twill top for the LJ during during when they were new, um, or when we first came out with the with the twill tops, which is roughly 2012, I think. Um, but we have are launching a twill option for both the Trek top and the Super top for the LJ. So you can get that premium lifetime material, lifetime warranty material on your LJ now. That's cool. All right, thanks. Where do they find all your products? All right. So besttop.com um, and really most almost every off-road shop in your neighborhood. So four-wheel parts, off-road warehouse, um, Joe Bob's garage, you know, any, any four-wheel parts store usually has access to Best Top. So. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. So hi, I'm Jim Flowers, the president of uh, Bubble Off-Road Recovery Gear, and uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about some of the products that we've got here. We won a new award today, uh, best new packaging product, so let's get into it and talk to you about what we do. So, starts off with a product that we started about 12 years ago, and that is a vehicle recovery rope, which is different than, say, what people were using before, like a strap or a chain. Uh, which really doesn't work very well. And the reason it doesn't work very well is because it doesn't have any stretch. A change can actually break and be actually very dangerous. So what we came up with is a recovery rope. This recovery rope is made out of a double braid nylon. And the double braid nylon is going to stretch. It's going to stretch, in this case, somewhere between 15 to 30 percent. That stretch is what that's going to do is kind of give you momentum for your vehicle is pulling away, takes the shock load out of your other vehicle, and that's what that momentum is what pulls you out versus something that is like a static that wouldn't do that. So we've been selling these for about 12 years. The Army was really when the first started. We were making it for them, and then we just moved over to consumer. So that's the main product that we're selling. The next product that we came up with was how do you hook these up? So you have a vehicle and you're going, okay, how am I going to hook this up? You really need to have some kind of a closed end uh, connection, if you will. You can use a uh, uh, you can use a, a, a D ring, and D ring is a little what has a little pin to go through it, but it's made out of metal. So we came up with what we call our synthetic soft shackle, and this synthetic soft shackle loop comes over the knot, comes back, tighten it back up. This material is made out of HMPE fibers, which has the same tensile strength as steel, but it looks like a rope. So this is gonna break at a very, very high amount. It's gonna act just like a piece of steel, yet it's much flexible, uh, much more flexible, obviously. Another thing is a real safety factor. Both these products, if something breaks, you don't have metal coming back. So don't use hooks, don't use metal if you can, when it comes to recovery. So those are our main two products that, that we have. Do you sell recovery uh, sets? Yes. Kit kits and all that? Cool. Yeah. So the sets are going to be is a set here is going to be a, a, a power stretch rope. And then you need two of these. Those are synthetic soft shackles. And you're going to hook, so you have a hook up on either side of it. And then we have a mesh bag because these things are going to get wet and dirty. You throw it in there, wash it down. So that's basically the gear set you're going to need for recovery. All your recovery gear. Very simple. So now, does, when you get the box, do you get a sticker? Because that's everybody needs a sticker. Got stickers. We got patches. We got we got it all over. And by the way, this is all warranty. So you also will get a warranty card with it, and that's going to last three years with these products. Now we also size the product to fit your vehicle. So what I, you're looking at here is this is a vehicle for a truck. So this is going to be for a vehicle that weighs somewhere between 5,000 to 7,000 pounds. So you're talking about a Ford 150, Ram 1500, something about that size, or a really heavy Jeep. What we found out is that your braking strength, uh, or a safe working load if you will, for a vehicle being pulled out needs to be three and a half to four times of the vehicle you're pulling out. So if you're pulling out a 5,000 pound vehicle, the braking strength of your rope and your synthetic shackles has to be at least three and a half to four times higher than 5,000. So somewhere around 15, 16, 17, somewhere around there would be the minimum that you want. So this one breaks at 28,300. 
So this is going to be the one, I'm sorry, 28,600. That's why this works. This would be our Jeep rope. And this is going to be a little bit lower braking strength, has a little bit smaller uh, diameter to it, whatever. And same thing, you've got a gear set where you've got the power stretch rope, you're going to have the two synthetic shackles, and you're going to have a bag that you can put the whole thing. This is sized for your Jeep or a smaller vehicle. The last package we would have is for a UTV or a side by side. Something like that, whatever, where you're going to have the, some of those power sports type vehicles, and this is size for that, and this is going to break it a little bit lower. But again, you need a smaller rope, fits in your vehicle a little bit easier. It's all put together in one gear set. Great, where do they find all your products? Okay. Find all our products at some of the best off-road stores, uh, wherever you happen to be, uh, whether it be four-wheel parts, or RW, or some of that. Uh, we're also on places like Summit and some of those off-road real truck. We have our products on that, uh, but you can also get it on Amazon. Um, it's on that that uh, third-party site too. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, guy. Hey, my name is Jim. I'm with Dynatrack, and uh, someone was just asking me about ball joints for JT and uh, JL front axles, and they that person was wondering why we went to so much effort to do this. So the reason we did it was that the original ball joints tend to wear out prematurely or at least sooner than the customer would like so we want to have a more durable ball joint we also wanted to make it so that he could rebuild it over and over and over again without wearing out the press fit between this housing end this yoke and uh, the ball joint itself this is welded it's part of the housing so if this wears out there's no way to fix it except to replace the whole housing so this once it's pressed in you can basically remove this boot and there's a snap ring take the snap ring out couple of set screws, pull these out, and you can use this with a drift to just knock out the internals. We give you a kit with new internals and a new seal, and you're on your way. How long does it take to do that, you know, non-professionally? Uh, you know, I would give it a half a day, you know, just give yourself some time. But if you're, you know, savvy, you can probably do it a lot quicker than that. You know, maybe about an hour per side. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. How's it going, guys? Scott here from Micron Vehicle Dynamics, and kind of here today at SEMA Show to talk about um, our different suspension systems and the stages and kind of how it works. Like we offer all of our kits in stages of the kit where it's all the same parts kind of mixed together with different goals in mind. Um, the higher numbers of the stages generally offer more performance off-road and on-road as well with more parts to come along with them and therefore you know a little bit bigger price tag to accompany that. So besides just ordering them as a complete kit, you have the ability to a la carte everything. So if you you know really have a good idea of what direction you want to do as far as your build, you can kind of piece it together and build a stage five and a half, so to speak, compared to just going with our exact you know uh, kits that we've set up because in all honesty, you could mix and match a lot of these components in a lot of different ways than we currently do to achieve really whatever results you're after. The easy way to go about it all of ways is, you know, the top end kit's gonna have pretty much everything, so you got all your bases covered, but you can build up to it over time. Like, if you need, you know, say, the two and a half inch shock absorbers over, say, a 2.0 for the level of off-road use you're doing, you can start with that and maybe save on a Gladiator or something like that, you know, it's a Jeep where you may not need all of your different control arms right away. You can still run the stock stuff, invest in the shocks, that way you get the performance, and then over time, start a la carting in the extra pieces, and then eventually you'll have that stage eight kit that, you know, that everybody's after. So, you know, try to avoid that sticker shock, don't let it get you down, we're here to help. If you have any questions, give us a call, send us an email, we'll get you going. Thanks a lot. All right. Good morning, and welcome to the Quadratech booth at the 2022 SEMA show. Uh, it's been a great show so far. I hope you all are having a wonderful time. Uh, lots more to see here than there was last year. Uh, I would say in almost every hall, so that's really exciting. Uh, this morning, I'm here I'm going to talk about two main things. And the first is new products. I know everybody's really excited to see what is underneath here, but first I want to talk a little bit about new products. This year, Quadratech has launched over 200 new products. We have 70 new products in the new products hall over in South Hall. So if you have not been over there, 
I would highly recommend getting over there at some point to see those. A lot of those new products are also here in the booth. They're gonna highlight a couple of our brands and you can come see some of those things here. Links, wheels, and suspension. You can see some of that on the Bronco. We have new links wheels here and a suspension kit. There's also links suspension on the Jeep behind us. A lot of that are new products that are being launched right here at the show. Diver down seat covers, neoprene seat covers, you can see some of those here. Uh, master top, soft tops, and soft gear. You can see right on the Bronco some and the Jeep, those are master top items. Uh, carnivore bumpers and side steps, we've got some of those on a couple of vehicles. And the list keeps going. Lost Canyon overlanding gear, you can see a rack right here behind me, behind Eric. Uh, and rescue winches and recovery gear along the other side. A full line of winches and recovery gear. So very exciting stuff uh, under the Quadratech brand or under the Stallion website for Bronco. So that's the first reason we're here. The second reason is, a, is a, almost a more important one. It's about giving back. So we love off-roading here at Quadratech. We love being outside. But that activity and using our vehicles is under threat. People want to take that capability away from us. And we at Quadratech believe it is important that we still have places to do that. And off-road parks are the number one place we can go and use these vehicles, really enjoy them the way they are meant to be enjoyed. So we have partnered with Tread Lightly to do something that we're calling 50 for 50. We're gonna do 50 trail cleanups, one in every state in America. We've already done eight so far. We've cleaned up 1,700 pounds of trash and 400 miles of trails so far in only eight states. We've been to places like Michigan. In fact, we were just here in Nevada yesterday doing one great event. We have a lot more to go. It's gonna take over a year to get this done, but we wanna give back. We wanna make sure that this is a hobby that our children can enjoy we keep these places beautiful and clean, and that allows us to keep coming back. But we thought we needed a vehicle to be a part of that whole thing for a couple of reasons. One is, just functionally, we needed a vehicle that could help us at the trail cleanups, pick up the trash, and, and get it out of there. That's one. But two, we wanted a vehicle that really embodied the spirit of 50 for 50. And so, with no further ado, we present the Quadratech JTE. All right, so the JTE started life as a, a four-door uh, 4XE, and we cut the back of that off and turned it into a, a two-door gladiator of sorts, right? Uh, we worked with Greg Henderson, an unofficial, uh, uh, unofficial and his team did an amazing, there he is, right here, unofficial use only, thanks Greg. And they have done builds with us before, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we have featured on this links, wheels, and suspension. We have amazing products from some of our non quadratech partners. Like Alpine did a, a wonderful stereo for us in the seats that Catskin did. Make sure before you get out of here, you get a wonderful up close picture of that. They did a phenomenal job. And of course, Nitto tires. Uh, but all of, all of our great Quadratech brands are on here from Carnivore, Rescue, everything is on here. But what's great about this vehicle is that we can take it to these trail cleanups, load it up with, with trash, and get it out of there very quickly. But it is a responsible vehicle, it's a hybrid. We are doing as little impact as we can to our environment and making sure that we are giving back in a huge way so that tomorrow our children can do this. So I'm going to let Greg give you a little bit more detail on this vehicle. He is very aware of all of its amazing. Intimately. Yes, there we go. So Greg. Thank you very much, Ted. And again, thank you for the opportunity to come to SEMA again and kind of try and blow out last year. So last year we did a beautiful build, the YJL. Uh, this year, we've got the JTE. So, I mean, I can go on for hours on what we did, but I'll give you the basics. So the top is an original JT top that was shortened. Uh, we ended up cutting it into, I think it was nine pieces, and then putting it all back together. The freedom panels still work. Everything works just like factory. Um, when you look on the inside, 
We did. We've got catskin seat covers, and this is the first time this pattern's ever been shown, but it has the electric stitching. So it's the electric pattern for electric vehicles. Because the devil's always in the detail with the build. You want to make sure that everything flows front to back. We were really fortunate with some of the new Prototech products, like these carnivore bumpers. The front bumper is just how you get it off the, out of the catalog. If you ordered it, you probably have it in two days. The rear bumper, we didn't have a, a Gladiator one that fit, that matched, so we took a JL carnivore rear bumper and reshaped it. It was about 40 hours of fabrication work, but we wanted to make sure that everything was flawless and we used as many of the new Quadratech parts as possible. From the headlights, these beautiful plastic fenders that, you know, they're open it up a little bit more than a Rubicon. So this only has a two inch suspension left in 37s, and you could probably squeak a slightly larger tire. Um, but just like with all my other builds, I want it to be as close to what you could buy at the dealership if they made something like this. So uh, the paint is custom, everything kind of is custom on it. But one of the cool features, I'd never driven a 4xE when I first got this. And it's actually a blast. The, the torque and the response, it's instantaneous, they're wicked fast. Um, so it was really a joy to be able to build something and work on something like this for Quadratech and to work with some of the partners, you know, from Factor 55 to Power Tank, Cat Skin, you know, just some of the best of the best in the industry all helped with this build. Um, but this is the first one that's probably over 90%, 100% Quadratech parts. So I hope you enjoy it. If anybody has any quick questions, throw them up. I do want to mention one more thing, the graphics on this. We've actually changed them a few times in the past week to make sure that they were flawless. And we used the Jeep Graphic Design Studio, which is one of the best sticker companies on the planet. Uh, so if you need anything, you definitely need to hit them up. We wanted them to look factory, but give it a little flair. And Matt and his team just knocked it out of the park. So I want to thank them. I want to thank my painter, uh, Red's Paint Shop, and Quadratech, Ted at Quadratech. And then there's two other people I want you to see, Eric. This is Eric Ammerman from Quadratech, and he is my driving force at Quadratech. I call him 12 times a day, every day, in the process of these builds, and if it wasn't for Eric and the team behind him at Quadratech, none of this would ever happen. It doesn't matter how good I am. You need a team. One other one I wanted to say, when they unveiled it, we were fortunate enough to have Rick Payway, who's a kind of a 4x4 celebrity, and he helped unveil it. So thank you very much, Rick. Thank you for Eric. And I'm going to throw it back to Ted and uh, enjoy. All right, again, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you to Greg and the entire team of Quadratech. We hope that you will join us on the trail for a 50 for 50 event. You can find information at quadratech.com about that or at treadlightly.com. We look forward to seeing you out there and enjoy the show. Bye. Smarts. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and run through some of our uh, products that we have available. Uh, we got Jeep, you know, JK, Jeep JL, JT. Uh, we've got Ram 2500 stuff that we're just releasing. We've got Bronco parts that we're releasing. Um, we've got some of these boards up that have our products, and I thought I'd just kind of go through and show you what we got. Um, so over here, we kind of have all of our drag links options that we have for the JK. Um, some notable features are they're all forged ends. Um, we do all here in the states. We've got a forged machine shop in Northwest Ohio. Um, we do 30 millimeter ball studs instead of 26. We do steel on steel bearings uh, for longevity. All the the joints are greasable, so that means that you can maintain them long term. You know, for many people, these uh, linkages end up being like a, the last one that they purchase for their vehicle because they last that long. Um, so you can, I mean, you can tell they're all e-coated and powder coated for corrosion resistance. Uh, like on the JL stuff, we do uh, magni coating, which is the anti-corrosion. 
for because uh, they use aluminum knuckles on those. So having dissimilar metals go in there, you'll get galvanic corrosion. So we coat those to keep that from happening. Um, JL, JT both have the no drill option. So like this is a no drill top mount. We use a taper sleeve to fill the taper from the bottom side and a straight shank stud, um, which allows you to ha to do a flip without having to uh, drill the knuckle out, which is a big change, uh, you know, and allows somebody who may not be confident in their abilities to uh, yeah, I mean, go and drill out a knuckle allows them to get that done. No idea um, on this side here, we've got tie rods. Uh, this is our standard chromoly adjuster, quarter inch wall, inch and five eighths chromoly. Uh, you know, it's e coated uh, for corrosion resistance. This is our Pro Series aluminum adjuster sleeve. And this is an inch and three quarter solid. It's T6 7075 aluminum. And we're the only ones to offer an aluminum option with a clamp. Everybody else uses a jam nut, which, uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, is kind of the least desirable way to do it because uh, anybody that's used a jam nut can pretty much attest to the idea that uh, you go down the trail 50 yards and uh, you're tightening your jam nut again. Uh, whereas a clamp, you know, our clamping systems, uh, the chrome is 45 foot pounds, this is 85 foot pounds, and a jam nut, you're trying to get. 400 foot pounds on it and most people don't have the tools to do that so um, you know something that nobody else offers we do offer aluminum people don't realize it because it looks more OE with the hard coat anodization it kind of looks like a you know steel but there is a difference between the two we've got track bars here which are pretty much the biggest and strongest ones that you'll find uh, available for any of the JK stuff uh, they're nearly two inch solid steel forgings uh, and like all of our stuff, they're true adjuster sleeves, so it's a right and left hand thread, which allows you to twist, uh, you know, and adjust it, adjust on vehicle to get things centered. Uh, we just came out with the low profile clamps. So these are our standard clamps here for the track bar, which they're a little bit bigger. Um, some people have tighter clearances and require, you know, a little bit slimmer uh, setup so that they can get everything to fit without problem. So these are our new aluminum clamps that we have. You see there, um, this is our Pro Series polyurethane bushing. This is our standard rubber bushing. Um, if you have a rubber, you can upgrade to the poly. It just requires that you press them out, press the new ones in. We've got rear track bars here. This is going to be your JK rear track bar, which is going to be the same OD as the front ones. And then you've got JT and JL, um, and these are about inch and a half. So they're slightly smaller, um, but there's no lack of durability and longevity involved in those. Over here, we've got a lot of our bracketry and accessories. These are our relocation brackets, which are required when you decide to go to a top mount drag link. Um, you want to make sure that you keep your track bar and your drag link parallel. And to do that, uh, you have to relocate where your track bar mounts uh, when you do that uh, top mount drag link as well. <clears throat> so this will be the JL version. This is the JK. This is our HDN stabilizer. We've got multiple options for clamps for your tie rod for the drag link. Uh, we have a stabilizer relocation bracket that works for JK, JL, or JT. This is our JL, JT sector shaft brace. Um, later this year we'll actually be releasing the JK version of this, uh, which everybody's been anxiously awaiting. Um, again, you know, sealed roller bearing setup, which makes a big difference, uh, you know, in comparison to the other options out there. We've got our gray anodized and our black anodized uh, two to two and a half inch lift. That's Actually, that's not right. It should be two to three and a half inch. Just caught that little bit of a fluff there on the thing. So when you go and do your edit, you can go ahead and fix that. But um, yeah, so we got those. On this side, we've got our drag links with attenuators. Um, the attenuator, as I try to explain to people, is basically like an inline filter for your steering wheel. So internally, there is a piston, and then on each side of the piston, there's a bushing. And what it does is as you're hitting things like train tracks or expansion joints or uh, potholes where you normally get kind of like a little nibble in the steering wheel because you're getting that dip into the to the you know aberration of the road this go ahead goes ahead and kind of absorbs that impact prior to it hitting your pitman arm which keeps that nibble or that push or pull from happening on the steering wheel and it kind of smooths things out um, they work really well with hydro assist something people need to note when they do run it if they're running like the Fox ATS or the Falcon, uh, you know, Nexus, like adjustable stabilizers. Um, if you turn those up too high, what ends up happening is 
it requires such a drastic amount of force to compress the stabilizer that it will overpower the internals in this and it will actually kind of cause like a delayed feeling. So it's something that not everybody realizes that I try to make sure that people are aware of uh, when they're going to go ahead and try this option out. Um, over here we've got some of our new stuff for RAM. This is the stock adjuster for um, drag link for the, I think it's, it's either 13 or 14 and up um, RAM drag links. They were actually welding them from the factory because they were coming loose. So this allows you to go ahead and swap that out so you can have adjustability. This is a new product that we're coming out with. It's a sector shaft brace for the RAM. Um, that should probably be sometime early next year. And then we've got front and rear track bars. Um, the rear track bar is only going to be applicable for, I want to say it's like 14 and up rear uh, 2500s because they do coil spring. Uh, any of the leaf spring, obviously, you're not going to use a, a rear track bar. But this works, we put it up on uh, 11 or 12, I think a 12, 2012, and, and uh, we've made the front track bar work for that. Um, and then we've got our Bronco stuff over here, which I can show you. We've got our extreme duty tie rod ends and something unique that we're doing uh, to help uh, with some of the issues people have realized with uh, the inners is we have our jam nut that actually acts as a reinforcement as well. So this threads on and then we use it to jam it to keep it from moving and then it also reinforces the inner that's on the inside. Uh, we're also doing a three and a half inch lift which is going to be a spacer lift and we've got an upper control arm, a tubular upper control arm. Uh, it's got a steel on steel ball joint inside, uh, it's greasable and you can adjust preload and it's also rebuildable. And then on the back we've got our track bar. <laughs> Which if you climb underneath there you can see our big red track bar and that's a adjustable track bar. Um, you know for the rear it can go on up to a UD80. Uh, so Dana's actually using this with their UD60 kits and uh, those that are are going really crazy putting an 80 on it. It'll work for that as well. So you can find you can find all of our parts at steersmarts.com. Um, and if you have any questions or need help, you can reach out to us there. Sales at steersmarts.com, info at steersmarts.com, um, or any of the other links that are on our website. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, I'm Josh from S-Pod. We're here at the uh, 2022 SEMA show and we are uh, in the uh, West Hall over here. We're next to the Overland Experience and uh, we're showing off some goodies today. We have our Bantam system with our touchscreen and our HD. Um, this is your, gonna have all your bells and whistles, your strobing, flashing, dimming, momentary, full of expandable. Uh, this particular vehicle behind us has two systems in it and they're running both controllers. Um, and then for the simple folks, we've got our six switch system. Uh, this is going to be more simple on and off, uh, you know, fix it and forget it. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we also have some vehicle specific uh, stuff that we're working on. Raptor, uh, more Jeep stuff like always, uh, the Pro R from uh, Razor. So lots of good stuff coming out and uh, coming down the pipeline. So if you have any questions or need anything or any requests for product, let us know and we'll be happy to entertain it. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm Zach, and uh, this is the new Earthrummer SX based on the Chevy 6500. Let's go inside and take a look. So this is the inside of the Earthrummer SX. Um, we have a lot of stuff that uh, fans of Earthroomer will recognize as stuff we've done for a long time, like our induction cooktop, big galleys, all of the beautiful hardwood cabinetry, and, and all of the hand craftsmanship that makes this just as beautiful as it is. Um, some of the new additions that are different for the SX compared to our older uh, models like our LT and LTIs, uh, we're now running a dry bath, so we're going to have a separate 
toilet from our shower around the corner here. Is that from customer feedback that they wanted? Yep. yep, that's from customer feedback. Some other things that they've asked us for are things like a washer dryer here. So we're offering a washer dryer. That can also be replaced with a um, an extra fridge freezer combo or extra storage, um, you know, pantry storage, things like that. Uh, behind you is going to be the first of the California King beds. And you can also see here, from there you can also see our pass-through. So this is our pass-through into the cab. And again, this is all based on the Chevy 6500 chassis. Um, so now we're, we're passing through into that with an all hardwood pass-through. We've got our California King bed up top. Still has the, uh, the four glass windows along the sides as well as the glass roof hatch up top for roof access. And new addition for us is going to be in the back, we have another California King bed that converts from your dining room table. And so when the dining room table actually drops down, um, it telescopes down and uh, we have another California King bed. So this allows you to really sleep four to six adults very comfortably. We're also now doing a true wine cooler, wine fridge. And this here, most of our quiet ride dish management has been pulled out to actually set the table, but we still have the options that a lot of Earthrimmer fans of, or fans of Earthrimmer are familiar with, like our quiet ride dish management, and just a lot of other galley storage here. This is clo closet? Yep, so this is going to be hanging clothing closet, a cedar closet, and then all the drawers below are going to be very wide, full depth drawers that, you know, just lots of storage. Nice TV. Does, it, does yep. this have the Bose surround like you did in the... Uh, this one's actually Sonos. Okay. So, and the TV actually flips down from the ceiling. So when it goes back up, it stores up so that you still have your uninterrupted view on three sides, 270 degree glass windows. Another customer feature a lot of people have asked for has been uh, shoe storage right by the door. So we're going to be doing boot and shoe storage for them, so you don't have to track it all the way through the camper. And this also uh, allows us to have our steps that pop out for access into the bed. So we can slide these out here. But we still have extra drawer storage inside of them, but that's now my steps in the bed. Is that the brains of everything up there? This is, uh, so here we see our ghost security system. So that's going to be uh, our always functioning security cameras, uh, recording at all times on all four sides of the vehicle. And then over here is going to be the actual control systems for the entire truck. So. Can you run that remotely from your phone? Yeah, you can run it from an iPad. Um, and then there are also other screens in the truck that allow you to control this. So you can kind of be anywhere and still have control of all the systems. So does it run off an app that you download? Yes. Okay, or yep. okay, so you can run it on any iOS device? Uh, or only iPad. iPads right now. Um, they're working right now on a solution for iPhone. Okay. Yep. Bluetooth, is that how it connects? Uh, it's actually through Wi-Fi. So okay. the whole thing is now running uh, onboard internet that is going to all be Starlink. So we have Starlink running on the entire truck as well as cellular-based cradle point internet. All this and the kitchen sink. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> and the kitchen sink is beautiful in this truck. Very deep sink, a lot of different accessories. So you've got a lot of different things you can do. We're also gonna be running all new uh, faucets and other fixtures throughout the truck that are just a lot more premium feeling. Give the customer a lot of custom options for those things. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely.
really excited to be talking about some of our products. So, this is our uh, Toyota Tacoma. It has multiple dual battery systems. You could even say dual dual battery systems, which is, which is what we like to say. Um, really, when you're looking at dual battery systems and power management, the number one thing you gotta realize is got to isolate those batteries. So, there's two batteries under the hood. One of them is the starter battery. One of them is an auxiliary battery. These batteries are isolated, meaning that only one is getting charged by our accessories. Maybe that's a fridge or a winch or lights or something. Um, only one's getting charged down. And the way that's happening is with our BCDC, which is right here, mounted. Um, right at the front, there's an awesome bracket that we sell as well, universal bracket for really pretty much any application. And that BCDC not only is isolating your batteries, but it is also your DC to DC charger. What the heck does that mean? That means that while you're driving, you're gonna be pulling charge from your alternator through your starter battery into your secondary battery, and you're gonna be charging, which is great. So it's your battery isolator, it's your DC charger, it's also a solar charger. So on this truck you know, in particular, we have our plug right here, and we're inside, so it's not we're not plugged in currently, but you can plug a solar panel in right there. So for this one little module, this BCDC right here, you're getting so much value. DC charging, solar charging, battery isolation. It is such a great starter kit, or even a lot of people who are really serious overlanders, especially in Australia where we're from, use this kit often. But if you're looking for a little more, let's head to the back and we can, we can talk about that. We're really proud of that under, under the hood or under the bonnet setup because it is extremely, extremely useful. There's a ton of applications for it, but this is really cool too. So let's, let's talk about our Manager 30 right here. This is also a charger. So it's a battery isolator, just like we mentioned with the BCDC up front, but it's also um, a DC charger. It's also a solar charger. It's also a low disconnect controller, and it does AC charging. What the heck does that mean? Well, you could plug it straight into the 110 at your house. So if you're not gonna be driving for a while, you could just plug it in and that can be your trickle charger or you can quickly charge back up if you're at an RV park or at someone's home, just get an extension cable, plug it right in, and you're gonna be getting 30 amps of charge, which is amazing. Um, this screen is probably my favorite part of the whole system. The reason being is when you're out there in the woods or you're out there in the desert, you're overlanding, you're having a good time, and you, maybe you're running a fridge, you don't know what your state of charge is exactly, and it can be really stressful. And a lot of times, before I had a screen, before I had the Red Vision display, that is, I would be stressed. I didn't know what my state of charge was, so I would turn things off because I didn't want to kill my batteries. Now, with this system, we can see right now, we're at 75%. Personally, I know we are drawing more than we're charging. Red arrow down means we're drawing. And in 16 hours, if we maintain this level of discharge, we are going to be at zero. So now I have the peace of mind of knowing, hey, I've got 16 hours of discharge. I need to get some more charge or I need to turn something off. But I know exactly how much time I have, which is 16 hours. Awesome. So psyched. Um, the final final thing that is so cool about this system, and this really completes our top of the line, most amazing power management system, is the TVMS Prime. Uh, this is our distribution box, and it allows you to bring all of your products into one central location so that you can control them from one central location. That location will either be this display, the Red Vision display, or there's actually a Bluetooth app so you can control, like everything you can do on this screen, you can do in that app. And what this does is it allows us at the push of a button to turn things on or off. So instead of having all of your accessories wired into a crazy motherboard of fuses and wires and oh, it's just so crazy. It's all right here, it's clean, it's easy to organize. And with a push of a button on your phone or with a push of a button on the screen, you can turn on and off all of your accessories. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah.
doing? This is Ruben de Sosa with uh, James Baroud uh, Rooftop Tents. So let me show you here. We have a full line of, uh, of products, We're starting with our, rele our new release of the Frontier Odyssey Tent. This, this tent is made of uh, ABS. You have a fully 360 degree view uh, with our alumi aluminum mesh, um, which uh, will cover you obviously for uh, mosquitoes. Uh, once you close down the tent, um, you have a full enclosure and uh, no, you know, no light gets in. So this tent is an all-weather all tent that will be good for when it's hot because you add a lot of ventilation, but also when it's uh, cold, it's got great uh, isothermic uh, you know, resistance. And you can come over here and we have um, our Evolution uh, product line. These are uh, made by hand in our factory in Portugal. And these are fiberglass uh, tents. Uh, we have them uh, that they open uh, straight up. The one that you see here, here is an XL model. Uh, and then we also have a clamshell um, uh, style, which is very good for the winter and when there's uh, very uh, windy conditions. Uh, all of our tents can be combined with uh, awnings. Uh, we have our side awnings, uh, which goes eight foot, six foot, and then a back awning, which is uh, four and a half foot. And then we have our masterpiece, which is the 270 degree Falcon awning, uh, which also is available with, uh, with a full enclosure. Our awnings are the only ones in the market that uh, have a tunnel attachment where you can go from the awning uh, all the way to your tent without having to be outside in the elements. On this side, you can see uh, another one of our products, which is our Falcon Shower. It's a full, full enclosure, including, including a, a ceiling, which is unique uh, for the showers. And you can access uh, your vehicle from here as well. Um, the advantages of our tents and our awnings uh, is that the setup is very uh, easy. Our tents go up in a minute, they are assisted by struts, and then also our, our uh, Falcon uh, showers are also made so that you can you know, very easily put them, uh, you know, put them out and, and you know, go on with your day. All right, thank you so much. Hey everybody, Michael here with iCamper. Welcome to SEMA 2022. We are at the booth here and showcasing all new things for products that we're showcasing. Uh, behind me you can see we have a couple new things of, that we debuted last year, but everything that you see in our booth is ready to rock and roll and shipping. So this is gonna be our X-Cover 2.0 series with the Annex attached to it. And what makes this really unique is when you're at camp and wanna get out of the weather, you can do so, or even the bugs by setting everything up inside. You can cook, you can hang out, sleep additional family members or pets, all within the convenience of having it attached to your tent. Um, we also have it in multiple options. So the one with the annex is a four person size. Uh, on the display stand will be the two person size. Um, so these are gonna be our X-Cover 2.0 series. Uh, down here, this is gonna be our kitchen system that has been out for a while. This is our IOX, and what you can see is when it's fully displayed out, you can prep, cook, and enjoy your meal from a low seating position, or when it's all folded up, it'll look like the one in the back in the black coloring, and you can still store additional cookware inside, so you can have everything consolidated right in one, which is really nice. Are these all Camp Mom, or Chef Mom approved? Chef Mom approved for Conquest Overland, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Uh, over here, this is going to be uh, our brand new wedge style tent called the BDV or Blue Dot Voyager. This comes in two different sizes of a single and a double, so depending on the occupancy that you want in there, you have different options of what you would like to do. Though for both sizes, they do have a T-track that runs around the perimeter and the top, so you can put all kinds of accessories, things as traction boards, lights, shovels, uh, solar panels, you name it, bike racks that we have on display here for the booth. Everything can be mounted directly to the tent, which is great. And it has roughly a 100 pound lifting ca capability while the tent is deployed. So kind of keep that in mind, depending on what you're putting in there. Uh, so this is gonna be our single version on the Tacoma. And then with the uh, awning deployed, that's gonna be our double version of our two person size. On that Tacoma, you'll find one of our brand new products that's recently launched of the ExoShell 270. So as in the name applies, you get 270 degree uh, coverage all the way around the vehicle, which is really nice. And then it folds up and stores in an anodized aluminum case. So it's really great for the folks who like to go off road and have that uh, trail abrasion resistance by having that hard case versus a soft case. And then continuing around the booth, we have our tried and true Sky Camp models. Uh, the one you'll see here on the display stand is our two-person, and then the one on top of the Tundra will be with the rain fly uh, retracted up. That's our four-person. Both the same tents, just different occupancy all together as well. And then in the middle, also one of our uh, recently launched products. This is going to be our Disco Series. So everything that you see here is going to be all the same thing. They're just configured differently, so you can cook over a fire, propane, or wood. You can set it up with the actual skillet to cook as you see there. You can remove the stove if you want to boil a pot of water. Or if you want to completely take it off, you can use your own cookware like you see on the back. So totally modular and everything fits down in the size of a tote bag to carry it for storage. So, just a brief overview here of our iCamper booth here at SEMA 22. And I appreciate you guys joining me and let us know if you have any questions. All right, I'm James with Expedition One. Let's take a look at some of these bumpers. I will start here. This is the Nissan Frontier with our dual swing. We've got the, the arms swung open here. Tire mount on this side. Over here we've got our NATO can. Swing real easy here. Got this one here. You get our latch system down here. Just pushes right in. Real sturdy. Shut this one to go in here for safety. Keeps it open. Just like that. Opens up just as easy. Simple, easy to use. If you come over here to the side, we've got our bed rack here up on top. Really easy to use using T-slot bars here. We've got the tent up on top. Same thing here with the, our ultra rack. Really easy to use for mounting stuff. Down here we got the sliders to protect. Heavy duty can take an abuse as well as getting the aluminum tread plate on the top. Great for traction as well as for look. Up here in the front we've got our bull bar front bumper. We've got winch. It's got tow points here as well as a cutout. That holds up to about 3.75 inch line. Uh, go here to the other side, same dual swing. This one's on a 22 Tundra. Um, you're gonna get the same features. Latch system's gonna be exactly the same. Same size cutouts for lights. Uh, something special about these ones here, they do work with the blind spot monitoring system. A little cutout there for those. Uh, this is the new rack, same system. Except for it opens up, you can hide your accessories up on the inside, as well as be able to access the inside, or it works with a tonneau cover. Is that the factory tonneau cover? This is from Truck Hero. So will the factory tonneau covers work, um, or you have to do aftermarket? Most likely, we have yet to test them with okay. them, though. But they use a really similar system, except they fold and they don't roll. Okay. So, uh, but they look like they should work. Uh, same thing for mounting here with this and this. Here's another set of rock sliders. This is the bare aluminum though. So it gives a little pop and shine to it. Up here we have our ultra extreme duty full bar front bumper. 
these ones are going to have a heavier tow point here from the front for recovery as well as reusing the OEM lights off the front bumper. It's got cutouts for your parking sensors so you don't lose any of those capabilities. Over here we got our last vehicle, we got the Bronco. I'm going to start up here in the front on this one. Very similar front, bull bar, full protection. You've got your winch spot there at the top, still using your parker sensors. You've got your hook points here. Over here, another pair of sliders. Take a good beating on those as well. Um, up here, we got our SAM rack, which uses more open concept. Um, this one specifically for the Bronco. You get a bolt right up here. You take that off. And this will actually hinge up right here so you can take off your panels. Uh, take off those top parts. Gives you a lot of open. Or you can take that whole front side off and just run this back half and take the rest of your top off and still have some area to space stuff up there. Here in the back we have our single tire carrier which opens right up with the vehicle. Nice and easy. Get your high lift jack mount back behind it. Opens up, takes all the weight off this for your bigger tires. Puts it all on this bulky spindle here on the other side. All your weight coming down right into the bumper as well as you can mount some additional accessories right here onto the swing arm itself as well. All right, well, thank you so much. Hey, no problem. Just finished the West Hall. It's uh, about 3:30, so uh, started at 8:30. Pretty much going non-stop. Having you uh, haven't stopped at all to eat. I think I stopped once to have a bag of chips and a Gatorade. But uh, so if I got everything done, we had a great day. Now we're gonna hit up the North Hall real quickly. This is uh, mobile electronics and technology. So I'm not sure how many interviews I'm gonna do here. I'll try to just get some walkthroughs. But let's go see the North Hall. Chris with Rinse Kit, and uh, yeah, these are our portable shower systems. This is our current systems that we have on the website. This is called our Rinse Kit Pro. It's three and a half gallons, it's battery powered. The battery lasts six months if you charge it and you're gonna use it every single day. So it's got a huge battery in it, and uh, yeah, you can put hot or cold water in there. It's good water pressure, it's about 50 PSI, so you can you know, take a shower with it or clean off your equipment, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then we've got some of our new 2023 stuff. This is gonna be coming out early next year. This is our roof rack mounted shower. It's five and a half gallons. It's got the same high powered pump, but we also added a temperature gauge, USB charging, and uh, cigarette plug charging there too. And this one also has an SAE plug that you can pull out from underneath if you want to run permanent power to the vehicle. It'll heat up in the sun, and uh, we do have options for heating it with your cigarette plug or your uh, seven pin trailer plug on your vehicle. So this one's really cool for being able to throw it up on the vehicle. It can mount on any side, and uh, yeah, it's great for overlanding and all that kind of stuff. And then this is our rinse kit cube. Uh, this is kind of our military grade version of the Pro. It's got tie downs, the same USB charging. This one is four gallons. And uh, yeah, super durable, easy. Just kind of throw it in your truck, ready to go. Sweet. Yeah. Where do we find all your stuff? Uh, Rinsekit.com. The, the front of our trailer is our removable tongue. So you can put an art articulating hitch there if you wanted to. It's got a park brake, manual park brake, so you can set the parks, set the brakes while you while you park, get in the get in the trailer camp. Uh, it's got electric brakes as well, front storage box, side compartment, 200 pound rollers, little kitchenette, single burner stove, a sink, 18 gallon water tank underneath with a stainless steel tank. 
Uh, it's got a 12 volt water pump on the other side. Uh, two and a half gallon propane tank. Independent suspension. Removable fenders, if you uh, get out on the road, destroy the fenders. LED lighting, stabilizer jacks, 270 awning right here. Uh, unfolds, goes all the way around the tent. It's also remove, uh, raisable or lowerable, so if you got like a seven foot garage door you want to be able to park your, your trailer in, you could lower that down and still get it in the door. We'll slide for your gear. Tan or uh, sleeping bags, different mattresses, whatever you want. Cooler, also on a, on a roller. 12 volt cooler attaches to the uh, connects to the battery pack up front. Lockable rear spare tire rack. Oversized tires. Premium wheels. License plate bracket. And here we got our water tank where you can load your 18 gallons of water. A little 12 volt water pump. A uh, little power supply in there. And then. Propane tank. Oh. Can you uh, swap out the uh, wheels to fit, you know, Tacoma, Toyota? Sure, Toyota, yeah, we can change Jeep. out. That's a five on five uh, Jeep bolt pattern. You can swap that out for a Tacoma or uh, any other hub that you wanted. Okay. Can you fit, what's the biggest tires you fit on these? Uh, we've had some people put on 35s, uh, but it, yeah, I mean, you can remove the fender Pull it up, whatever you want. The 35s fit on? 35s will fit on there right now, yeah. Sweet. Right, where do we find you guys? Canyonlandcoach.com. We're in Ogden, Utah. So I'm Randy from Off Grid Trailers. Uh, we're manufactured in Alberta, Edmonton, in Northern Territory. Uh, I distribute these trailers out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and this is our Pando 2.0. So we'll just start on a complete walk around with a fridge freezer in the front. It's a true dual zone. Uh, fridge freezer or freezer freezer whatever you want to do move on back to a queen size bed uh, it is six foot seven in length with a TV inside it has AC and heat options as well as mattress upgrade options as well so very comfortable sleeping uh, entirely well, aluminum will any mattress fit in there so say if you want to upgrade They're on your custom own? by one inch each side so oh, okay. two inches narrow of a full queen oh, okay yeah so full aluminum construction, there's no wood, nothing to rot, nothing to go away. We build our doors in-house. There's not another door manufactured like that in the industry, in our industry. Uh, searched out the best suspension in the market. We went to Fabtech Motorsports and had them design our suspension. It's got eight inches of wheel travel. It's on a stainless steel shock. It'll never rust, never go away, never rot. Just like the trailer itself. What size tires can fit? Up to 35s. And bolt patterns for Jeep and Toyota and all that? 6 on 5.5. Five. Because the size of the stub shaft is so large, we have to go with a 6 bolt pattern. Okay. Engineering states it. So this is our rear galley area. We actually have 33 gallons of water on this trailer. Hot and cold running water on the sink as well as the shower. You have your second, second fridge in the back. Dometic cooktop, Boss stereo systems, LED lighting, USB ports, everything you need with uh, full spice rack and big cabinetry. So lots of storage. Full hatch rear door, stabilizer jacks under the trailer. Again, these are all options that we put on the trailer, so it's kind of what you want and how you want to outfit them. It's our shower enclosure. Again, there's 33 gallons of water on board with a hot water Insta hot hot water heater. Run, that's it. Up on top, up on top, we have a queen size bed, a rooftop tent. It's a hard shell camper, and then so you got sleeping for two on the top and two inside. And then our furnace and our hot water heater. Where do they find you guys? 
online? Uh, at offgridtrailers.com and uh, or leaddogmotorsports.com, either way. All right, thank you so much. Hey guys, it was a fantastic day here at SEMA day one. My feet are killing me. 19,000 steps, didn't even have time to eat. Uh, just sat down two times just to have some chips and a soda and some Gatorade, get some water in me, and back on the road. This is a jam-packed event. You definitely need multiple, multiple days. It took me one day just to do a couple interviews and talk to people in the West Hall. There's three other halls to talk to see. So uh, got a little bit of the North Hall done. Pretty much saw that. A lot of that's the electronic stuff. So I didn't. I, I walked through that stuff real quick. Saw some trailers in the North Hall. Uh, those are all dropping right now. But anyway, tomorrow we got another jam-packed day. Loving it so much. I'm so glad I got to come. It's all because of the help of you. Catch you later.